Okay, so we've done all of these now. So now I'm going to click Save. I'm going to go to Triangulation Properties. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and I'm going to choose Compute Accuracies for Unknowns. Then I'm going to go to the Advanced Options. And I'm going to choose Use Additional Parameters as Weighted Variables. And then I'm going to go to Advanced Robust Checking. I'm going to click Run. We'll get a triangulation report that says that there was iteration convergence and it'll give you a RMS E value. I'm going to click update to accept these or update and then accept to accept. And then I'm going to click OK. <clears throat> I'm going to click save. I'm going to close this for a moment and now you'll see that our image 377 is oriented here. Uh, 375 is behind it. And if we go to images and click on one of them and choose properties, we can go to exterior information and you'll see that we now have uh, a location for where the camera was. It has it at 45.89 meters above the surface and at these coordinates. We can go to the next one and you'll see that it has it at 44 meters uh, at these coordinates. Uh, and these are the rotational angles of the camera. So we'll close that, and you'll see we also have this external parameters highlighted. Um, I'm going to go back to the start point measurement tool, click OK again. And one thing we can do that will increase the accuracy of a project is we can add tie points. So I'm going to click on automatic tie point properties. I'm going to choose active image as the image used. And then I'm going to choose tie points. And then I'm going to go to distribution. And I'm going to define a pattern. Uh, there's several ways to do this. This is one I just like to try. And, and then you can define where it will try to put points. And I'm going to have it try to put a bunch of points all across here. So then I'm going to click run. And what it's trying to do is it's trying to find automatically find points on the left-hand photograph that match a point on the right-hand photograph and then assign uh, a point to that. So this can take a couple of minutes. Um, here it is run. It says that it has found uh, out of the points I asked it to find that it had a 61% uh, success rate, which is pretty good. Click close. Now you'll see on down here we now have a huge amount, six, uh, 526 <coughs> um, points added, and these are these have a type of none and a usage is tie. Uh, and if you click on any one of these, you'll see that it bounces around, uh, and the image on the left hand should match an image on the right hand side. Now that we have these points uh, scattered all around the photograph, uh, we can re-triangulate. We just press the triangle button. And you'll see that the uh, RMSE value has dropped from 7 to 1.1291. Uh, this means the quality of the data is now much higher. So we're going to update, accept, close. Now notice when I clicked accept, it assigned x, y, and z values uh, for the uh, tie points. So I'm going to choose Save, Close, and we'll see that we again have uh, the data showing here that the little triangles are the ground control points and the squares are the tie points. I'm going to Save. Now I'm going to create a digital elevation model. We do that by highlighting both. We'll choose Z, which is a DTM extraction. And uh, we're going to choose a single DTM mosaic, uh, which doesn't matter much because we actually only can create one mosaic from two images. So uh, I'm going to choose my cell size. I'm going to choose a 10 centimeter cell size. And I'm going to call this uh, new DTM. DTM and click run. 
this will take another couple of seconds. See the progress down on the lower right. Okay. Now if we click the DTMs, we can see there's a new DTM value. If we right click and then click view, it'll open a file that has a digital elevation model of the area uh, in question. And you, the darker areas are lower, the lighter areas are higher. Uh, another thing we can do from here, if we go back to images, so we can highlight these two and we can do a mosaic. So we go to mosaic, mosaic tool. It'll say that it's changed. Uh, do you want to save our changes? We'll say yes. And it's going to ask for an elevation source. Uh, ask for a DTM file. And the file that we just created if I can find where I stuck it, let's see, um, here, I don't have this set up too efficiently, uh, so we're going to look for new DTM, which is right here, this is the one I just created, okay, uh, we'll say, we'll talk to use the entire image, and it now has uh, the two images overlapped. I'm going to set up a cut line. I can show this in more detail later. I'm just going to give you an idea of, of what this thing can do. Um, and then we'll do run mosaic. And this is going to tell it to marry the two graphics. <coughs> New mosaic. Marry the two graphics and undistort them based on the digital terrain model. And so um, this cranks along. This can take a while also. And once it finishes, we'll have a nice image to look at, hopefully. Okay, almost done. We'll click OK. And on this case, we click the viewer in Erdos Imagine. Um, I think it's off your screen there, but it's on the top toolbar. It's called Viewer. And we can choose the image that was just created. And here you can see our undistorted, although it, it looks probably a little distorted to you, image of our project. Oops, too close. So, um, photogrammetry suite has some problems creating elevations on distorted objects. Uh, I'm sorry, on objects um, that are very shiny or have very smooth surface, uh, like these cars. So you'll see distortion if you if you have this sort of thing in your your image. It's just a problem with the uh, logarithm. It's designed to look at natural objects, and, and unnatural objects confuse it a little bit. Um, but you see, as I move the cursor across the uh, the image down in the lower left, you can see the coordinates of this location. Now this file can be opened in ArcGIS or another software and then used uh, for mapping purposes. So I'm going to end this tutorial right there. Um, I hope this has given you the broad outline of how this is supposed to work. And if you have any questions, you can email me at willis.arch at gmail.com. Thanks. Bye. Okay, here we have... Um, an example of the data um, extracted out into ArcScene, which is a, a program that's able to render in 3D uh, digital elevation models and mosaics. Uh, we're looking straight down on it here, and I'm going to turn it so you get an idea what we got.
Now the resolution of this can be upped quite a bit. Uh, this is at a five centimeter resolution. Now you'll notice in the center of the screen there's a little point that's sticking up. Uh, that's where the total station or transit was set up. Uh, so it's sticking up in the air a little bit causing the DTM to poke out like that. And uh, here is just the digital elevation model. And uh, I added a few more images to this graphic uh, on this side so that we have one more to look at. I hope it's helped.